Hi, uh, today is the November 3rd, 2024 Massachusetts Pirate News. Uh, my name is James O'Keefe. I'm chair of the Massachusetts Pirate Party, or as we like to say, captain. Uh, I'm joined today by uh, Secretary slash First Officer Steve and our candidate for the 17th Middlesex State Rep District, Joe. How are the two of you? Doing great. Uh, I am doing splendiferous. You know, I will be very happy that uh, everyone will vote and this race will be over. But uh, politics is a marathon, not a sprint. So even if I lose, it's not going to be over unless they adopt all of my policies and do what I wish of them. <laughs> which, Good luck with that. Which means it, yeah, which means it's not going to be over. Um, but I think in the long haul, uh, it will. Uh, it, it's going to be good. Great, and then so tomorrow is Monday, of course, um, and then the elections Tuesday. Uh, do you have any um, any events coming up? Either of those? Days? Yeah. So tomorrow, I am going to be doing a sign holding event on a very popular street corner. Um, with just a lot of traffic with law residents and people of the city. And it's just a very popular spot. So I expect to run into some characters, both left, right, up, down, center, and right on through. Um, and so I'm hoping that any volunteers that want to come out, um, lunch is on me. Let's get out there and wave some signs and do some piratey flags and just have a good old time. Um, what's the address? What, uh, the address that is a phenomenal question. It's, it's at the connection of 38 and 133. So there's free parking down the street in the hospital parking lot at, at Saints Memorial parking lot, um, where you can just park for free. And then it's just a short walk from there. There's also a park there, but parking at the park is generally very limited. So, um, and the parking at the hospital is a little bit more secure with security and cameras. So that's why I'd recommend parking. Um, and of course, um, it's right at that corner. So I will be on the park side of the street. So, and I will be there from one to three, maybe a little bit beyond three, uh, just to be safe. Excellent. And then I uh, assume you'll be at the polls on Tuesday? All day long. Uh, so the polls, uh, I'm planning on being there from open to close, um, or at least as close to open to close as I can be, so that I can continue just getting in front of as many people. I am going to wear my Sunday best and just try and have as many good conversations with the people of the city. And uh, it's kind of funny because I actually recently just saw an ad for Vanna, who is who I'm opposing, and it's literally every single person I've had a conversation with, almost no one knows who Vanna is, yet she had a list of all the people supporting her, and it's literally like corporate, corporate, corporate. Establishment, 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 establishment. So if you really want more of the same of this, what we've been going through, uh, just go ahead and vote for the same person who's been in there creating the situation we find ourselves in. You know, if you just, you, you want to bend the knee to the corporations and have them tax us into oblivion um, and not really care about the people whatsoever, um, you know, you know where your vote's going. But that being said, if you're looking for someone who's spent their entire life uh, working in the trenches, working with people, trying to make the small little improvements, then it's a pretty clear choice who you should vote for. Excellent, Joe. And then so. polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. on uh, Tuesday, November 5th. Uh, no other day, and uh, you if, if you can cast your boat as cast your vote as long as you're in line by eight p.m. 
Um, if you have a mail-in ballot, uh, you need to get it uh, in the mail and postmarked uh, by Tuesday. Uh, you can drop it off at any of the uh, boxes that have been set up by your local municipality. I know in Somerville, I think they need to be in by 6 p.m. on Election Day. Um, so, you know, get your mail-in ballot uh, dropped off on Monday or something like that. Uh, it's too late to request a mail-in ballot, if I recall correctly. I believe November 1st was the uh, last day to do that. Uh, you may still be able to do an absentee ballot. We'll have to see. Um, you can certainly check with your local municipality and they'll give you the update on that. Um, yeah. So uh, just a, a little early voting statistic. Um, my town, Arlington, has a, uh, we have a, like a, a local news website. It's a nonprofit, but uh, they ran an article earlier today uh, basically, you know, they checked in with the clerk to see how, how, you know, how's the early voting going and the mail-in voting. And out of 33,000 registered voters, we've got had 14,000 vote already. So that's, that's kind of impressive. I'm, I'm happy to see that. Excellent. Um, so, uh, Joe, what's your polling place? Uh, that would actually be at the Riley School. It's right off of 133, and uh, I don't have an exact address in front of me. One. We can put it in the description. Yeah, that, so it's uh, at the Riley School. It's so if you're coming from 495, it's it's fairly easy to get to. You just go to the lights and you take a right. Um, so the easiest way to come in is off of 38. Um, and then you just head south into Lowell, away from Tewksbury, and it's a couple lights. And then once you get to a really amazing pizza place, you just take a right and it brings you right there. Um, so, and that's probably where that pizza place is probably where uh, I plan on organizing if I have any volunteers coming to hang out at the polls with me because who doesn't love amazing pizza and wing things? Thanks, Joe. Looking forward to it. Uh, so besides Joe's campaign, uh, we have ind endorsed all five ballot questions. Uh, there may be, a, like in, in my municipality, Somerville, there's a sixth ballot question about doubling the amount of money um, <clears throat> for... Um, dang. Uh, uh, you know, um, anyways, for, uh, oh, oh yeah, sorry. Oh, the C yeah. yeah so sorry. I, I happened to be going through Somerville the other day and I saw some people had plastered signs, uh, no on six. So I gather that Somerville, the question number six is a, a request, you know, you're asking the voters if it's okay to increase the community preservation act tax rate. Thank right. you for that save, Steve. Yes, exactly that. Yes, the doubling the Community Preservation Act tax. Um, Which for for folks who uh, are, aren't familiar with in Massachusetts, it's kind of like a little separate piece of property taxes and it has to communities that use it, uh, they get some matching funds from the state and they have to spend the money on one of three things or accommodate, the money has to be spent on there are three things you could spend the money on. That's what I'm trying to say. Three things that you could spend the money on. You could do it, spend it on open space and recreation. You could spend it on uh, affordable housing, and you could also spend it on historic preservation. It's you know it's good stuff. Um, so for the five ballot questions, we urge you to vote yes on on all of them. However. Uh, as came out recently in Commonwealth Magazine, they reminded us, or I should say, the leaders of the Massachusetts House, House and Senate, or as we call it here, the Great and General Court, uh, has, has reminded us that even if we, the voters, choose to endorse a particular ballot measure, they can always rewrite it or, you know, just eliminate it if they so choose. <laughs> 
Yeah, um, we sort of went through this a little bit in, I, I think, in 2016, when there was a, a ballot question to legalize the use of marijuana in Massachusetts. And, you know, the what by the time the legislature got what the way this started, it would have been marijuana would have been regulated similar to alcohol. And now it's kind of more like gambling, I guess. But um, I mean. I really like my reps in, you know, in the in the in the general court, but I just wish the general court itself wasn't so darn impenetrable. I, I'd like to know well, what they're doing. Here's <laughs> it's a question. To keep tabs. Sorry for interrupting, Steve, but here's a question for you: If they do decide to strike down what the voters have put forth, say all the voters say yes on it, and they're like, "Well, you know what? Question three. We're just not going to allow that to happen. Is there any transparency in seeing who's saying that this is a good idea to strike down? Well, they'd have to vote on it. And no doubt, at least those who are in favor of it would get at least one senator and one House member to call for a roll call vote. So theoretically, it, it would be recorded. Um Unfortunately, you as someone who's who's in the viewing area cannot actually take a photograph of how people vote. So you'd have to, I don't know, write them down really quickly or something like that. Yeah. And just uh, for the the ballot questions in particular that seem to have, um, you know, the Honorable Mr. Mariano and Ms. Spilka peeved. Our question one, which would uh, suppose, which I gather, which would um, give the state auditor more ability to audit the legislature. And interestingly, I found out that her office recently tried to do this and released a report. I'm uh, downloaded it, and I'll uh, make that recreational reading for some point this week. The other one that has them peeved is question number two, which would remove the MCAS test requirement uh, for graduating high school. I don't know where they stand on number three, but uh, they do seem peeved at one and two, especially one. They don't like one. They really do not like question one. <laughs> well, speaking to question two and the removal of the MCAS, there's a lot of special needs students and that will just have no way of passing the MCAS. A lot of students who are just um, on s separate programs. Um, and I know one particular student who's on a separate program who is very dear to my heart. And, you know, it's really expected that all the students, and it's, you know, it's, it was a heartfelt legislation that all students need to pass this, but it literally has no bearing. Passing the MCAS has no bearing of them progressing in life. It has shown no impact in a student's ability to do well, get into college, do better. Um, it, it never, it, it was put into place to standardize the schools, except the small problem is it hasn't made any student's life better and all it has done really is just force the teachers to prep for this massive test instead of focusing on the goal of getting their students ready for life and so again going back into what the teachers unions are saying the teachers unions are saying this is a terrible test and it just distracts them from their purpose of getting the students ready for college and getting the students ready for life and that's that should be the real goal of why they go to school is to set them up so that they're good for life. So, you know, if you have a heart, it's time to get rid of the, this ridiculous test that is more harmful than good. Um, so with that, uh, let's move on to the next, uh, if, if uh, I'll, Go and link to it. We do we, a previous ballot, uh, previous pirate news. Uh, we went over the ballot questions in more detail. So uh, we'll link to that in below and somewhere here. 
Um, so you can go and uh, take a look at that, should you so choose. Uh, so the next topic is some great news. Um, the the McFlurry machines have been freed. Uh, can you give us an update, Steve? Oh, yeah. Thank you, you know, and mad props to the Library of Congress. All right. So in, we have to, you know, give a little bit of background. Uh, so this is really focused at, at the core. This story involves the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, which was um, passed at the, I guess, the beginning of the millennium. Um, but you know, it's a big law, but one of the provisions in it is um, an anti circum Convention provision. So this basically the law says that you can't um, try to circumvent access control, you know, digital access controls. And at the time this was put in place, you know, the I think the big the two big concerns were uh, that people would uh, defeat copy protection on media, you know, DRM. And the other was that people would tamper with their cable boxes to get access to stuff that they might not have been paying for. It's something like that. But what it basically means is that any piece of equipment, any piece of hardware that's got a software component and the software component, you know, has some sort of access control, um, you know, you it's you're, it's illegal to, you know, mess with it. Now, every three years, the Library of Congress can list can you know, issues a list of exemptions. These are things where circumvention is okay. And the latest addition to that are, is uh, I, I think the, the language is retail level commercial food preparation equipment. Um, you know, a, a famous one from a couple of years ago was um, agricultural vehicles. Hello, John Deere. <laughs> you know, you can't fix your tractor. Um, and apparently the issue with milk you know with um mcflurry machines is that they're like john deere's tractors and only you know there's only one place person who could fix them um so it it's uh it's nice to see that uh you know that expanding any little dmca circum any little chip against dmca is a good chip against dmca <laughs> Yeah, I, I liked that um, they gave manuals. They included manuals with codes um, because, you know, it's just so hard to, like, print out, I don't know, text. But <laughs> they would have codes. Um, but the problem is they would update the software and put in new codes and the manual wouldn't be updated. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, right to repair. You bought the stuff, it should be yours and you should be able to you know, fix it. And if it breaks, you get to keep both pieces. <laughs> well, I think a big thing too, with right to repair is just the, the blossoming of the ability to do 3d printing with both metal and with that. Uh, I know in the transportation industry, it's a huge issue, huge issue and a, a dip in quality and an increase in price for valve controls for the airlines. And it's it's pretty much what used to be a twenty dollar part is now a four hundred dollar part, and if you can just go out and make it yourself, um, that would be a huge win across the board uh, for so many hardworking Americans. You know, so right to repair is just such a huge and very important issue of our day, and you know how can we as pirates not support that? Amen. Yeah, I mean, I had a um, a, a clothes washing machine, and the um, I think it was the start button broke. <laughs> Behind the button, there's this little piece of plastic that looks like one of those uh, discuses that would shoot out of the old old gun, old little uh, toy guns, and mm -hmm. um, it broke, and I had to pay. I didn't, I hadn't debugged it and I called up, uh, called up the company and they sent someone over and 300 or so dollars later, they fixed it. And he said, oh yeah, I jury rigged. I didn't have the right part. I'll come back. And he never came back and then it broke again. So my son and I just got some glue and some like little plastic, uh, the little, the little plastic pieces to hold 
bread bags, got scissors, cut it up, glued it together. Hasn't broken since. Awesome. I wouldn't recognize. I wouldn't recommend that that uh, brand in the future. But you know, I won't say what it is. <laughs> you know? Um. So we have one last story. Um. And do, which of you want to cover it? Or should I? I um, think you should, Jamie. Go for it, Jamie. All right. Um, so one of the things that we've constantly been saying is if you put a back door into some communications device or some security system, someone's going to break into it. And so years ago, uh, they forced um, when they digitized communications, uh, the feds put a provision that said, if you make one of these devices, you have to put a back door into it that we have keys. Trust us. No, we'll use the court systems to wiretap any particular communication. And so that hole has existed for a while. And so recently, earlier in the month, the Wall Street Journal and other uh, Ars Technica did a, a good uh, summary of it. Um, they found out that likely hackers from the Chinese related to the Chinese government found out how to get into those back doors. It's not clear how far they got. It's not absolutely, we, we know they got into the system. We don't know exactly because of course, you know, the feds aren't going to be forthcoming. Um, if they're able to initiate wiretaps or if they could merely take existing recordings or see who's being wiretapped or whether they can add to that list, we don't know, but we know the system was broken into. Um, so when companies, when governments go and say, oh, this encryption device like Signal or, or Telegram um, or, or other tools, needs to have a back door so we can get into it and see that it's not being used for CSAM or some other nefarious purpose, realize that could be there for any government, potentially any criminal enterprise that can get access to it. Thoughts? Oh, yeah. This was, you know, I was, um, I, I, I'm looking forward to learning more about what happened, you know, hopefully someday we will learn more about what happened. Um, but the fact that, you know, whoever got in managed to, you know, basically change router configurations in, in Verizon's network is, is kind of impressive. Um, and this is not the first time this sort of stuff has happened. Uh, an oldie but goodie was uh, a case in around 2004 and 2005 where the, the uh, in Greece, the telecommunications provider Vodafone uh, had a bunch of switches from a, a provider named Ericsson. Now, one of the features of these switches was, you know, basically so they're, you know, the ability to do wiretaps. Now, it turns out that the Vodafone didn't uh, purchase this capability, um, but, you know, it was sitting, they didn't license it, but it was, you know, it was sitting there. And someone broke into the switches, turned it on, and uh, basically wiretapped uh, most of the Greek parliament. Uh, apparently, apparently, there was a lot of interest in what the parliament was doing around the Olympics at that time. Uh, I don't know if it was ever discovered who did this, but the U.S. intelligence is is kind of up on the uh, up on the uh, the list of suspects. You know, another example. And you know this is another oldie but goodie, but it's charming as hell. Uh, is you know TSA approved luggage locks? So the little locks with the TSA you know code on it, where you know the TSA agent, if they want to go into your bag, they just put a key, a master key in, turn it, and your your lock opens. You know, well, you know this is this is a, a physical example of a backdoor, um, and it worked for well. There was a there eventually came a point in time, no surprise, that someone posted high res pictures of the TSA master keys on the internet, 
And, uh, you know, some other person said, oh, wow, I can make 3D models out of this. And yeah, now you can uh, you can print your own set of copies of the, your, the TSA master keys, which I mean, that could be handy if you ever like forget the combination you put you put into your lock. But at least very interesting yourself, right? Well, then the, there's also whenever there's a back door, there's always somebody that can take advantage of it. I remember it was a few years back, but supposedly Apple made an unbreakable iPhone where they couldn't. There's just no way that people could hack in it, and it took them literally ten minutes. So no matter how secure your system is. And I think that's a big reason why us pirates, you know, cybersecurity month was last month, but every month is cybersecurity month to us pirates. We always want you to protect your privacy, your security. Um, you ask any of us, we'd be happy to go on at length about all the different things like Signal and, and what, I believe it was Brave for browser is the newest one. Um, or just going with the tours and onions you know it takes a little longer but very hard to track you using those um you know th there's just so many ways that you can protect yourself online and you should be using them you should be clearing your cookies you should be clearing your browser on a regular basis um actually per probably one of my favorites is peer block which then just allows you to see who is bouncing off of your network awesome software it's donation only and they are just phenomenal people um but it really just gives you the tools to see who's who's accessing your network and if you don't want them there you can block them so you know um security your security your data is something that people will use against you and we use it to sell you stuff, we use it to spy on you. And so it's just one of those things that you really need to just protect yourself, especially in today's world. Thanks for those wise words, Joe. I and, tried to please. Uh, and with that, we are at the end of this episode of, the, of uh, Massachusetts Pirate News. Uh, just want to remind you, election day is Tuesday, November 5th. Please uh, get out there and vote. Uh, we'd appreciate it if you voted for voted yes to uh, all five ballot questions. Um, also, administrative matter, we have a uh, bi-weekly meeting coming up on this Thursday at 9 p.m. You can go to masspirates.org and see how you can join. Uh, in addition to that, we're looking for a location for our winter conference. That will be um, on January 25th, 2025. Uh, so with that, um, we'd love to get your feedback. Please put a question uh, or a comment if you have, and uh, we'll get back to you. You can also reach us at info at masspirates.org. Uh, and just remember, while we have not chosen to endorse any candidate for the presidential election, the U.S. Pirate Party's uh, nominee, such as it is, is uh, Vermin Supreme for President of the United States. Um, Choose to vote whomever for whomever you want to vote for. Um, we have no opinion, though we'll just point out Trump is awful on privacy and Harris isn't better. <laughs> but, uh, well, she's slightly better, but Trump is truly awful. Um, and, you know, anyways, we'll leave it to you. Um, but you I don't know, like Nazis. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like Nazis. <laughs> this is Fuck not Nazis. Show. Uh, thank you for that, Steve. Um, and so, but do do vote uh, Joe Onorowski, 17 Middlesex. Uh, ha happy to have him as our uh, pirate nominee uh, there. And um, with that, we will say goodbye. Uh, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Steve. I uh, hope you have a wonderful week and uh, looking forward to seeing 
at least some of you on Monday and Tuesday. Bye. Thank you, Jamie.